Tabitha's great. You're going to love her. Uh, her and her husband can have a great church in Orlando. We love the Clay Tours, so you're going to have fun with Tabitha and Wendy bringing the fire. So it's Friday night. Brothers, we get to take care of the little ones. Not one, not one amen? What the heck? Come on, brothers. Where are you at? Where's all my men of God? Or you can come and help serve the ladies here for fierce and free. That would be fun, too. Hey, let's pray for our world, right? Right now, the world is in chaos. However, we're not surprised because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6 that there would be wars and rumors of wars, that there would be climate change, but that's not the end. He actually said, this gospel must be preached to all the world, then the end will come. So we're in the midst of the wars, the rumors of wars, and all the chaos. And then sometimes people are trying to push you to pick a side. What side are you on? Are you on Russia or Ukraine? The answer is yes. I love Russian people. I love Ukrainian people. Yeah, but what about the politicians? Yes. I'm praying for them. What side are you on, Israel or Palestine? Yes, love Israel, love Palestinian people, praying. Now, I do have a biblical mandate, Psalm 122, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So you got a word from God on that. But we also know God so loved the world. So what side are you on, Democrats or Republicans? Yes. yes. Right? Stop thinking you got to be like the world and pick a side and march. What are we marching for? I don't know, but my friends are marching, so I'm marching. My professor said, not a clue. These people are marching, not a clue. Stop picking sides. Pick people. Pick God. Pick God's way. Pick God's love. Pick prayer. And let's believe, right? You listen to one news report on one channel, these are the bad people. Listen to another channel, those are the bad people. Stop. Don't be stupid. Pray. Let's believe. Lord, help our Russian friends. Come on, let's pray. Help our Russian friends. Help our people. Lord, help our Ukrainian friends. Help our Ukrainian people. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for Palestinians and others hurting, struggling, suffering. We pray for America, for our leaders for our congressmen and governors. We pray for our people that they be healed from addictions and depressions and anxieties. Father, we pray that the word would prevail, that your word would reach our world in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So let's keep a biblical world view, not a political world view. Amen. All right. A few weeks back, Caleb and I started talking about the soul. So we're going to talk a little bit more about it today. I'm going to try to get you on the soul train. I'm going to try to get you some soul food. Try to help your soul get strong, get healthy, Get prosperous. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, may the God of peace sanctify you wholly. Notice the word, not H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E. May the God of peace sanctify you completely, the new King James said. The old King James, holy, all of you, completely. 
And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. Spirit, soul, and body. That's who you are, spirit, soul, and body. You are a spiritual person made in the likeness and image of God. God breathed into you the breath of life, your spirit. The Bible said that which is born of the Holy Spirit is the human spirit. So when you're born again, your spirit comes alive to God. Your spirit connects with God. And Corinthians says, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So your spirit is joined to the Lord. Your spirit is righteous, the Bible said. Your spirit is holy. Your spirit is connected with God. Then you have a soul. That's your mind, emotions, will. That's the human part of you. That's the part that needs to grow develop, become more like Jesus. Your spirit, born again. Your spirit is right with God, on your way to heaven, on your way to eternal life. But your soul, your soul, well, that can be up and down. Good day, bad day. Believe the Bible, eh, not too sure about the Bible. I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe all that stuff that's in there. That's a soul issue. Sometimes we make good choices, sometimes not so good choices. We still are Christians, but our soul is growing, developing. And if our soul is growing, then we're becoming more like Christ. Maturity happens in your soul. A baby or a young person, let's say 12-year-old, 15-year-old child can be born again, but they still have an immature soul. You're still not ready for adult life. They're Christian. They're born of God. They're on their way to heaven. But their soul needs to grow and develop just like we adults are still developing our soul so that it prospers, so that it's healthy, so that it's strong. That's what it means to become like Christ, to mature as a Christian. That's a soul issue. Spirit, born again. One with God, connected with God. Soul, well, depends. Depends on what you've done to grow and to mature and to become like Christ. We all are in that process. Some of us are more diligent in the process than others. So where where would you say you are in that process of growing your soul, becoming like Jesus, Or like the apostle said, spiritual mind or carnal mind, right? Some days we all have a carnal mind, flesh-ruled mind. We just get an attitude. We just get funky. You're still a Christian. You love the Lord, but you're having a little off day, right? Sometimes Wendy and I harass each other. A little bit of an off day there, huh, babe? Shut up. Peace. But some people can't even do that because they actually fight and throw things and just yell at each other. And it's like, ooh, that's normal still? As a Christian, we, we, we need to get past that. We need to grow through that. We need to stop saying, I'm leaving, I'm divorcing, I'm done with you. No, that's not Christian. That's a soul that's gone to the world, gone to the dark side. So the prosperous soul is when your mind is on the Word of God. And what I mean by that is whatever you're thinking about, you're thinking from a godly world view. So if you're thinking about work, right? You're working, you're doing your job. What does the Bible say about your job? It says you work as unto the Lord. So if you get slow when the boss is not around, and then you speed up when the boss is around, you're not prospering in your soul. Your mind is not right. Your thinking is not right. If you can steal things on the job because they don't pay you enough anyway, so you should be able to take this because they owe you anyway. Okay, your soul is not right. Your mind is not right. The Bible said you work 
as unto the Lord. Whatever you're doing, you do it as unto the Lord. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to be as quick as I can, as good as I can in everything that I do because I have a biblical worldview. If you have the attitude, you know, I'll do what they make me do. But when I can punch out on the second, I am out of here. Yeah, your thinking is wrong. Now, you are like most people in the world. You are typical, but you're not godly because godly people don't think that way. They have a different view. They give their best as unto the Lord because they're not working for the man. They're not working for the company. They're working for the honor of God, and they trust God to bless and prosper them. So if the company is not paying you enough, not paying you what you're worth, you're trusting God is going to bring new opportunities. God is going to open new doors. You're like going through the valley of the shadow of death, just passing through. Excuse me, pardon me, on my way to something better. I'm not here for long because I'm trusting God for new opportunities. But if you're stealing and punching out as soon as you can, and moving slow on the job, what you're saying is, I'm working for the man, and my only source is the man, and he's not nice, so I'm not going to be nice. Okay, that's not Christian. That's not how we roll. That's not what we do. But you will live that way even though you're a Christian if your soul is poor. Your soul is dark. Your soul is struggling. So we have a lot of mental health issues in our world today, right? It's common. We talk, uh, we hear a lot of talk about mental health issues. These are soul issues. Fear of sickness or disease, fear of crises, fear of governments failing, fear of financial problems, fear of being alone, fear. So fear and these depressions and anxieties drive many people because their soul is so poor, their soul is so weak, they're just trapped in these circumstances. Now, as Christians, we could be too. We, we can be on our way to heaven, but live like people who are not. So we need to prosper in our soul. We need to get strong in our soul. We need to get well. It is well with my soul. That's what we're going for, a well soul, so that we can live in that blessing and favor of God. So soulish issues. Eventually, you know, you're going to get a new body, spirit, soul, body. You get a glorified body. That's going to be fun because that glorified body is better than this physical body. But until then, all we can do is work on that soul, prosper in our soul, get healthy, get stronger in our soul. So strong soul, mind, on God's word, emotions, following your mind, not the other way. We don't follow our emotions. And our will aligned with God's will. That's when you know you're healthy in your soul. Mind, emotions, will. God's word, emotions are following, not controlling. You know, we say a lot of things about feelings. Feeling. We sing about even in church. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Ooh, 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 I got a feeling. Where do you feel that? Where is that feeling? <laughs> this is funny. Some of you will remember. We used to sing a song, I feel it in my feet. Feel it in my hands, feel it in my, feel it all over me. Feel it. Do you really feel it? What do you feel? What does that feel like? We use that word feeling and emotions in a lot of different ways. 
But emotions should never guide your life or guide your decisions. Emotions just follow. When you're thinking good, you feel good. When you're thinking bad, you feel bad. And when you start following your emotions, well, you know, it's just one of those days. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Right, dad gets home from work. I'm not feeling it. Leave me alone. Mom's yelling at the kids. Dad's not feeling it. Leave him alone. What the heck does that mean? You got the night off? You're not a father? Or you've somehow earned the right to disconnect from the world because you don't feel like it? I mean, what do you say to your kids when they tell you they don't feel like obeying you? Right? When you say to the kids, okay, we're going to clean up the kitchen and then we're going to... No. Kids are like, I don't feel that. I don't feel like it. Or you say to your kids, put your phone down, put your iPad down. We're going to have some time as a family. I don't feel like it. Well, you're going to feel something. This is what my dad would have said. You're going to feel something in about one minute. <laughs> the idea that how I feel should control how I act is wrong. But we allow it to happen because we use it just like our kids use it. So we have to stop. We have to say, no, how I feel does not lead me. It's how I believe. It's how I think. It's what I'm focused on. That's what leads me. And my feelings will follow. And then my will aligns with God's will. I like what Joshua said. Remember when he took over from Moses and the children of Israel were so rebellious, they always leaving God, denying God. Isn't it a sad thing that in Israel today, most people call themselves atheists? These are the people of God. People that God gave his word and his covenant to and saved them in how many different ways, and yet they still rebel against God, uh, won't even believe in God. So that's another message. But Joshua's trying to lead the people of Israel, and Joshua says, okay, choose this day whom you're going to serve, the gods of your fathers and the Amorites and the world or the God of Israel. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, see, we, he's establishing his course with his will, not with his feelings. Well, I don't feel like going to the office because there's people there I don't like. Yeah, well, we don't care how you feel. Okay, I know I'm not a good pastor, but maybe I'm prophetic. You keep following your feelings, you're going to be alone and poor and sick. I'm not joking because I don't feel like it and I don't feel like it and I don't feel like it. And pretty soon, no one's going to feel like being around you. And no one's going to feel like paying you. And no one's going to feel like helping you. So where are you left with? You cannot follow your feelings. Follow God. Follow God's word. Follow God's way and cause your feelings to support that. And come to church to get built up, not just spiritually, but emotionally, so that your feelings follow God. But if you act like a child, I don't feel like it, you're going to lose your marriage. You're going to lose your health. Because you don't feel like eating quality food and, and disciplining your life to walk and to exercise and to be healthy. I don't feel like, nobody feels like, I never feel like it. I feel like eating Cheetos and drinking Coca-Cola. But I don't do it because it's not healthy. I don't feel like talking to Wendy for an hour every day. You know, we have our little plan where we sit and we chat, and it's about an hour a day. Sometimes it's a half hour here and a half hour there, but we talk every day. But I don't feel like it. I already know what she's going to say. I've heard it before. 45 years. Come on, what's she going to say that I haven't heard? However, I know that if we don't love 
communicate, commune, share, be open, listen, pay attention. We're not going to be together in the next years because we'll drift apart like so many have. And then when we get divorced, we'll say we were incompatible. No, you did what you felt like doing and you lost your marriage. Stop following your feelings. Follow God. Follow God's word. Follow God's way. And make your feelings obey. Make your feelings submit. And don't live in your emotions. Some of you have convinced yourself you have emotions that nobody else has. And here's here's what you say. Okay, I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about you. (laughs) You say, I got to do what I feel. What? Nobody has to do what they feel. You got to do what God calls you to do. You got to do what God teaches you to do. If you're a child, you do what your parents direct you to do. Nobody has to do what they feel. This, it's some kind of a belief or, or an idea that's not good. It doesn't work. It produces isolation, separation, unhealthy relationships, and eventually a worldview that will destroy you. You know, there's days when I feel scared for people in my family who maybe are facing sickness and disease. Or maybe someone close to me who I know is going through a marriage struggle. I feel worried. I feel anxiety about it. But what I say is, Father, I pray your hand is upon them. I pray your healing is working in them. I pray your restoration is bringing them together. I pray that your divine power is working in their marriage. If I do what I feel, it'd be like, oh man, they're gonna get divorced. I can see it coming. I got a feeling it's gonna be bad. That's what our world does. And what do they get? Divorce and disaster. Pain and problems. No, get your mind, your emotions, your will aligned with God. Get your soul Strong. Get your soul. When my mind goes a little bit off, get back to the word. You know, the Bible said if you'll meditate in his word day and night, you'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. You'll bring forth fruit in season. Whatever you do shall prosper. But if you're tripping on old friends' television show, crazy things you've picked up off the internet, and bad news from the world, you're not going to prosper, right? So you've got to get your mind, emotions, and will lined up. So when your soul prospers, now you start prospering in all things. The scripture says you prosper in all things. Let me show you. 3 John verse 2. 3 John, little John, in the back of your Bible. 3 John verse 2. Here it is. Right there on the screen. (laughs) Coming to a theater near you. (laughs) I believe. (laughs) Lord, I believe. So while they're putting it up, 3 John says, Beloved, I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. There you go. So the connotation is that the prosperity of your soul is the beginning of prosperity in all things and even your health, right? Now look at the next part. I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. What is truth? Truth is God's word, right? You're sanctified by the truth. God's word is truth. So when your mind, emotions, and will follow God's word, God's ways, you prosper in your soul, you start seeing it in your marriage. It starts working in your finance. 
It's, it's working in your relationships. It's working in your parenting. It's, it's, you're, you start prospering in all things. Now, it doesn't mean you never have a challenge. It just means you just keep winning. You keep overcoming. You keep getting better. You, you beat the cancer. You, you, you get the better job. You get the new contract. You get the new opportunity. You just keep winning. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. It's in the Bible. Or, or it's a rapper. I can't remember which. <laughs> Maybe it's a rapper. Those rappers will give you a lot of good material. Okay, so you with me. You get it. We, we are choosing to get our soul aligned with God so that we can prosper in all things and live in health. In James chapter one, it says, if you lack wisdom, ask God, who gives you all liberally. That's a great promise. And it will be given to you. But ask in faith with no doubting. Here's another struggle in our soul. Most people struggle to focus, to concentrate, to be single-minded, because they're not able to give their attention, they can't ask in faith without doubting. In other words, most Christians, I'm talking about godly people, their soul isn't strong enough to stay focused on faith. They pray, but then they worry. They pray, but then they say, I don't know what we're going to do if God doesn't come through. They pray, but then they doubt. So that lack of ability to stay single-minded affects your prayer life. It affects your faith life. I think it was the devil that years ago started causing people to lose the ability to focus, to pay attention. We talk about and we laugh about things we learned in school that were useless, but maybe I got one thing, the ability to focus. If you cannot write, call it cursive, call it whatever you want. If you cannot write, it's because you can't pay attention. Your mind goes bing, bing, bing. Think about this, think about that. You forget what you're doing. You can't write because you can't focus. If you cannot read, it's because you can't focus. Pay attention. Block everything else out. Read. Well, you know, I got a lot on my mind. I know. That's called being double-minded. Now, look what the Scripture says. Ask in faith with no doubting. He who doubts is like a wind of the sea driven, a wave of the sea driven by the wind. Let not that man suppose he shall receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So we have a culture, a culture of people who are unstable because their attention span is like 10 seconds. If you don't get them with the headline, they're not even going to look at the first paragraph and no sense making it very long because they're not going to read the whole tweet. I got 144 characters. I'm lucky if I keep you for the first 10 characters. That's our culture. That's our world. And so everything is short. Everything is quick. You watch TV shows. It's changing. They do a three or a five minute interview. No longer than that because they got to get on to the next thing or they're going to lose you. And then the commercial comes. Bing, bing, bing. Used to be one minute. Now it's 30 seconds. Now it's 15 seconds. Now we have five-second commercials. Throw it in there. Pop it in there because you're not going to watch very long anyway. You're watching your iPhone while you're watching your TV show. So I'm just saying these are all results of short attention. We don't sit and talk. We don't have family time. We don't read the Bible together because we got a lot on our mind. We got places to go, things to do in our mind. But the Bible said, if you cannot ask in faith with no doubting, 
you will receive nothing from the Lord because you're double-minded. So our soul has to get strong, has to get focused, has to get disciplined, has to get single-minded. I believe, and that's, that's where I stay. And every time that thought comes back, what about so, how so-and-so is doing? I pray she's healed and whole from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. The power of God is working in her. But pastor, what if I'm scared? I believe the promise of God. Jesus died on a cross, bore our sickness, carried our sin. With his stripes, we are healed. Got to get focused. But Pastor, what if I feel? Yeah, my feelings are going to have to line up with what I believe and what what God says because my soul is strong in the Lord. It is well with my soul. And Sometimes through tears, you're saying, I believe in the name of Jesus. Sometimes when you see crises and challenges and difficulties, you say, Father, heal, help, restore, bring them back together in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stay right there. No matter what my feelings are doing, no matter what the world is saying, I'm going to get focused, single-minded. If you don't get there, Your soul is never whole. The Bible speaks of people with a double heart. One heart that trusts God, one heart that's in the world. Double-minded is double-hearted. And it's the whole heart that receives from God. I worship with my whole heart. Maybe you've never gotten there because you've always been kind of holding back a little bit. Have you done anything with your whole heart? Have you? Think about it. What have you ever done with your whole heart? Were you ever all into maybe a class or a program in school? You you wanted to play your instrument. You wanted to be on that sporting team. Yesterday I watched the All Blacks from New Zealand play the spring, spring box from South Africa. You know I'm South African, so I was for the spring box. And because of my faith, they won. It was the rugby match. It was the World Cup rugby. I know most of you never heard of it because we don't do rugby in America. But it was the World Cup rugby And if you watch those guys play, they don't have helmets or pads so you can just see the the sweat, the dirt, the grit, the blood. You just see it all over. And they are all in. They play with all their heart. And then they lined up after the game and the, the Kiwis got their consolation prize, and the South Africans got their gold medals from the president of the country, and you could just, man, they had given their life to be professional rugby players. And you get that sense when you talk or hear athletes talk. What have you ever done with that much passion, with that much commitment, with all your heart? Do do you love God? Do you worship God like that? Do you trust God like that? Do do you ask God to work in your family, in your marriage, in your children, right? That that all in, that's that's where your soul now is getting strong. You're, You're starting to feel it. You're starting to get it. You're starting to realize, I will prosper and be in health when my soul prospers. Commit to it. Right? We tell athletes, you got to commit to the shot. You got to commit to the play. Can't be out there second guessing, thinking about, wondering, wavering. And that's what God said to us. You got to get single minded because the double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So I know there's a lot of places you can go to church and they're much more relaxed. Just, just love the Lord and you'll be fine. We're all going to heaven. Praise the Lord. But I think you come here because you want to see what your life could be when God is prospering every part of your life. And that's what I want for you. 
I want you to prosper in all things. If getting to heaven was your only goal, you can go there today. Right? We'll have water baptism. We'll just hold you down till there's no more bubbles. Right? I'll just get my friend Slava, and we'll have baptism, and we, we can hold you down. Oh, yeah, it won't take long. You're in heaven. Right? You got that husband. You're tired of dealing with it. It's like, hold him down. Praise the Lord. Another one went to heaven. Woo! Is that all you want, to get to heaven? What about get to heaven and hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Let's, let's do that too. What about a wife that loves and respects you and a husband who worships you? What about children who say, thank you, Father, that I was born in this house. Thank you, God, that you bless my family. What about a company that hires people and pays people and they are glad to be around you? There's so much more than getting to heaven. We can get you to heaven today. But you will prosper in all things when your soul prospers, when your mind, your emotions, your will are lined up with God's will. Look in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Let's see if we can get that scripture up there. Philippians 4 and 8. Whatsoever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praiseworthy, meditate on these things. All right. Now, I doubt if you're going to find any of those things in the evening news or your Twitter feed or your Instagram line. Probably not much of that stuff in there. Maybe some. So you and I have to choose where we're going to focus, what we're going to pay attention to. Because the Bible said if it's true, noble, just, fix your mind on those things. Amplified Bible, fix your mind on those things. If it's just the world arguing, angry, frustrated, worried, fearful, yeah, I'm not going to focus on that. Not going not to listen. Oh, but they're a Christian reporter. Yeah, don't care. It's not my thing. I'm fixing my mind on things that will lift me, heal me, help me. Pastor Tree, you bury your head in the sand? Are you kidding me? I don't need anybody to tell me there will be wars and rumors of wars because the Lord already told me. I don't need someone to tell me politicians are corrupt. Hello. You forget, Jesus taught us how to live while he was in the Roman Empire. These are the worst of the worst. These are corrupt individuals morally, politically, in every way. And Jesus did not spend any time teaching us about Rome or government. He taught us how to live knowing that that's what would be happening in our world. So we focus, we get our mind on the prize. And the prize is living in God's will, God's favor, God's blessing. I'm trusting God to meet all my need according to his riches and glory. And I'm not going to let my mind. Now here's an interesting thought. Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. What if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? What do you suppose that means, to lose your soul? Well, maybe in the past we thought it meant you weren't saved. But that's not what he said. He said you, it's your spirit that's born. Again, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, John chapter 3. But what would happen when you lose your soul? See, that's when you've lost control to think clear, to feel good, to make godly choices. You've lost your soul. And we live in a world where many have lost their soul, can't get out of their mental health struggles, can't get past their addictions, can't overcome their depressions. They've lost 
control of their soul, right? So we're not going to go there. Jesus is teaching us how to live with a prosperous soul, even under an evil empire. Now, I want to close with this word and talk about it for just a moment as we go. Addictions. What's an addiction? Well, we, we, we assume an addiction is bad because it brings up negative connotations. We're addicted to alcohol or we're addicted to drugs. We're addicted to pornography. We have addiction. So those are habits that we don't seem to be able to overcome. We're struggling to stop it because the addiction is not good for us. But what if we got addicted to reading our Bible? What if we got addicted to sitting with our spouse and talking and sharing and communicating? What if we got addicted to walking every day? I can't help it. Got to go for a walk. I'm trying to sit here and watch TV, but I can't stop. What if you got addicted to being healthy, right? I think as a, as a younger person, I was addicted to Coke and Cheetos because my go-to diet. You know, when you're not sure what to eat, I would go buy a bag of Cheetos and a bottle of Coke, right? So I think Cheetos are addictive. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's, what, what's addictive to you? We don't want to say it out loud in church. Right? But it's a mindset, isn't it? It's just a mentality. Cheetos, I don't know, maybe they are addictive, but I know that it was in my head more than anything. And one day where I said, you know what? I want to be healthy. I want to eat healthy food. I want to live long. I want to be here for the grandkids, the great-grandkids, and the great-great-grandkids. So I got to change. Now my soul begins to prosper. My body begins to prosper. Right? When I, when I change the addiction or the addictive behavior, everything changed. Now, I did the same thing with drugs. When you first start drinking, partying, using drugs, it's like a Friday night thing, right? Okay, I'm talking to you that know. If you don't know, it's all right. Just look like you know. People will think you're cool. But a lot of you do know because you've been there, or maybe you're still there. Friday night, you're like, hey, Friday night! Woo! We're gonna party! Call up your friend. Friday night, woo! Friend texts you back, yo, Friday night. Right? And you just drink and you just party and you're, you're smoking and you're taking maybe hit some speed so you can stay up a little bit later. Hey! Woo! And then, seems like it should be Friday and Saturday. Because, I mean, while we're here, we might as well stay. Let's go. Keep it going. Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday, who cares about Sunday night because you're not doing anything Sunday night? It's not like you're going to church or something. Hey. So now it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then pretty soon, you know, Monday night football, you got to have a few beers and party with the guys. So now it's Monday, and there is Thursday night football. Might as well keep it going Tuesday, Wednesday for Thursday night. Pretty soon it's every night. You got to have a joint to take the edge off, and you need a drink just to get through the hangover. And then pretty soon it's lunchtime because, you know, the company, company will pay for the cocktails, which, by the way, I've never understood. Why are you drinking a cock's tail? <laughs> funny thing. Funny things we do in the world. And then pretty soon if I'm starting at lunchtime, I might as well start before I get to work because that will take a little of that edge off and I'll be able to function a little bit better. And brothers and sisters, before I got saved, I literally would not get out of bed before I would reach down, pull out my little box, get a syringe and some drugs, take a shot, and then put my feet on the floor. Now, you wonder how people get to those addictive conditions with various things. Alcohol or drugs is just... We know that's bad, but it could be the pornography. It could be just the negativity of our world. It could be the worry and the complaining and the depression. It could be the anger and the frustration. 
we just get stuck in these addictions. And it might go from once in a while, but it soon becomes all the time. And the thing with worldly addictions is they always have a hangover. They have a negative result. Godly addictions, I'm going to read his word every day. I'm going to worship every day. I'm going to play godly music and lift up my voice to the Lord, even when I'm not in church. I love being with the little ones. I take the little ones home today from church. I'll have four of them in in the car with me, and we'll have praise and worship music playing, and I love just to watch the little ones, the two-year-old. Alleluia. He thinks he's his mother. Alleluia. But whatever you give yourself to can become an addiction. In 1 Corinthians 16, 15, Stephanus and his family be, became addicted to the ministry of the saints. It became their addiction to serve people, to help people, to make a difference in people's lives. And look at how the Bible said it. 1 Corinthians 16, 15, they have addicted themselves I'm reading the old King James Bible. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. What addiction do you have? Are you addicted to serving? Are you addicted to being a happy person? Are you addicted to giving and helping others? Are you addicted to living a healthy lifestyle? You're addicted to working out or doing your walk or whatever you do. Let's, let's grow those addictions. And when, when the enemy brings the negative things, you say, no, no, I'm already addicted to something else. I already got something else going. I'm already on my way to another destination. I'm already living on a higher level. Hey, there was a day when I wouldn't get out of bed without getting high. But I can tell you, I'm close to 50 years now, and I'm not thinking wonder if I could smoke a joint before that third service. Because those third service people are quiet. (laughs) Ain't nothing happening up in there. I've already done two services. I'm just going to smoke a little joint, and they'll think I have a greater anointing. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? You think I'm real crazy right now. That's how you think about going to work. I'm going to drink a beer. I'm going to smoke a little. I'll do better on the job. If I did that, you'd think I had lost my freaking mind. Well, guess what? I think you have lost your freaking mind. Why? Because your soul, your soul is thinking the drug, the alcohol, or whatever it is, is going to make me better. And it never does. It never does. So let's get addicted to the things of God. Let's get addicted to prayer. Let's get addicted to speaking in other tongues. Let's let's get addicted to reading our Bible. Let's get addicted to being sweet to our spouse. Let's get addicted to being kind and loving. I just can't help it. I want to be mad at you, but I just think I'm going to love you. Come on. Let's create some new addictions, right? Okay, I'm out of time. Close your eyes. We're going to pray before we go.